Okay, so in this video, we're going to set up a Firebase database and we're going to write some simple code that's going to send some data to that database. And then hopefully in the next video, we'll be able to hook up our microbit, like in our previous video, integrate both bits of code. So we'll have one bit of program that is taking code from the microbit or taking data from the microbit and uploading it to Firebase. So I'm on firebase.google.com here. I'm going to sign in. You can create an account using a Gmail account, but I have a temporary account set up. So I'm just going to put in my password and log in. So I get into the home page and I'm going to click on go to console. So the console is where I can set up all my various projects, um, including my database projects that we're going to use today. So here we are at the console page. You can see I've got no projects, so I'm just going to add one. I'm going to give it a name, um, I'll call it microbit temp reader. I'm going to leave all the settings the same, accept the terms and conditions and create the project. So just while I'm waiting for the project to create, I have Thony open here. So it's ready to go and I'm going to be putting my Python code in here to send some data and test my database. So again, we'll just check our new project is now ready. We're going to continue and under our new project we're going to click on database and hopefully a create database button will appear create database now this is important i'm going to start my database in test mode which means i'm going to allow reading and writing i'm not going to set up arduous security rules because that's a whole another level of learning and it's a lot of intricate coding to get that working. So today we don't really mind because there's nothing too secure going into our database. So here we are, we've created our database. Now there's two types. I'm going to use the real time database, which appears like this. And you can see there, it's given us a unique address up at the top here. And that's the address we're going to use to post our data to. Down here we can see our data and at the minute it is null because there's nothing in here. So before we get started, we're just going to go into rules and again, we're just going to make sure that we unlock our database and allow some writing. So there's two falses there and we're going to turn them both to true for read and write. So replace both of those and make sure that you hit the publish button. Rules are published back to our data. We can see it's ready to accept some data. So at this point, I'm going to go over to Thony and I'm going to start my coding. And again, I'm going to import my Firebase library to start with. And again, there's a previous video that shows you how to install the Firebase library on your computer and make sure that all the technical stuff is set up. Uh, for now, I'm just going to import Firebase and then I'm going to create my connection. So I create a connection name, Firebase connection, if I want. Uh, and then I use the API. And again, just take note of the use of capitalization and non-capitalization. And at this point, I'm going to put in my address. So I flip back here, click on my database, copy that, flip back, paste it in there. And I'm going to put in a non-parameter. And just that simple line opens up our database with no security or anything, but it's ready to be written to. And we've called it fbcon. So I'm going to create a while true here. So we're going to do an infinite loop. And I'm going to just, for the test, ask the user to enter a temperature. So I'm going to create a box called temperature variable, and I'm going to convert it to an integer. And what is the temperature? Okay, so we stored a temperature. And now before I upload it, I'm actually going to put it inside a dictionary data structure. Dictionary data structures are easily dealt with with Firebase. So I'm going to create that. I'm going to give it a heading just called temp. And I'm going to send up the variable that we just created, temperature. And I'm going to close my dictionary. So I've created a dictionary called data underscore to underscore upload. It's a bit of an awkward name, but it'll do the job. So I've created the dictionary, I've put in my data, and now I just need to send it. So I'm going to say result is equal to the name of my connection dot post. 
So where are we posting it? So again, I can give it a little subfolder if you like, sub branch. So my test data, I'll call this branch. And what am I sending? I'm sending data to upload. Now what's going to happen is if that connection is successful and it successfully posts the data to the database, the database is going to return a unique identifier code to my program and we're going to store that unique identifier in a variable called result and we'll know it worked if we can print result and we see our unique identifier. So that's really all there is to a basic test. So what I can do is I can take this over to one side of my screen, the database and the other and hopefully when I run it down here it's going to ask me what the temperature is and I'm going to make up a temperature it's 23 degrees press enter there's your unique identifier that's been returned again the while loop loops around and over here we have our test data appearing under our database and if I click the little plus it'll open up that branch you can see the unique identifier identifying the temperature that we just sent up and by opening that branch we can see the data itself. Now if I run the program again you can see the question coming up what is the temperature 45 press enter and again a new data set appears again I didn't even have to press restart because I've got it in a while loop so a third one and it appears so on and we can close the entire branch like that and get it back and that is us writing data to our database now there's no problem we can add more than one piece of data at a time so for example if I wanted to add something like name and it doesn't have to be a variable we can define it so there's a name John Smith the only thing to watch out is if you're putting in more than one put in a comma after between them so there's your comma and when I run it this time it still asks me the temperature and again I'll say 24 and this time when it goes up it'll also put up two bits of data so you still get your three or your four entries now sorry but when you open the fourth it's also got this additional data point called name so now that we've got our database working and we're successfully uploading data to it the next video is going to integrate what we talked about on the micro bit so we're going to get the Python code that's reading from the microbit over serial and we're going to combine it with this code that sends it up to the Firebase and we're going to add a couple of other features um, and then that's that side of the project finished.